Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. On today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this little Sony TV. This thing is exactly the same as the one I recently RGB modded on the main channel, but this one apparently has some kind of a fault. It's model number KV-9PT50. Well, in fact, not exactly the same as the one I had on the channel before. That one, of course, was uh, black color plastic, and this is white. The other difference, though, is this has a coily mains power cord, and the real design of this thing was, um, it was supposed to go in your kitchen. It's like a kitchen television. And if we look on the back here, unlike the one that I was working on that had a DC power input, this thing is mains power only. Otherwise, it is exactly the same. Manufacturer date on this is January 2000. And well, uh, the fault is apparently, let's take a look at the post-it note on the top here, powers off with a squeal noise, flyback. I didn't write that note. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug this in. We're gonna see what happens. See if it goes or see if it blows. I heard the uh, degaussing coil energize. And let's see, anything else happen here? Nope, nothing else happened. Here we go. Okay, so it definitely powered up and there was high voltage. I feel the high voltage there but there's definitely some kind of a fault in there because it did power itself off. Now, a lot of Sony TVs have a flashing error code right here, and this one doesn't have it. I think this little power LED here, which is green, should flash to indicate that there is some kind of a fault. And yeah, Sony, why didn't you uh, do anything about that? Let's try again. Okay, there we go. We still have high voltage though, it came back. You know, with the sound it's making, you probably won't be able to hear that on the video. It's, it's, it's kind of reminiscent of like the horizontal oscillator being way out of spec. I'll break out my phone and we'll take a look at what the oscillator is running at when we turn this on. I get it to start. Okay. Hopefully that is visible, but the big peak there is around 15.7 kilohertz, which is the correct oscillator frequency, but there's definitely some side tones on there that are making squealy noises like this one right here, which appears to be 10.5 kilohertz. And that is absolutely not what it should be doing. And another one up there at 21 kilohertz. All right, well, maybe it's time to uh, pop the cover off and take a look inside and see if anything is at least obviously wrong with this thing. Well, let's see here. Looks pretty clean inside and I don't obviously see any faults right off the bat at least. Now I was told that this television did work and then one day started doing this. So this fault developed while it was actually functional. Yep, everything is looking pretty good in here. So probably the next thing I'm gonna do is just put this here. We're gonna take a look and see if I can find any broken solder joints. Don't think that's usually the problem with Sony TVs, but you never know because this thing is portable. It might've been dropped. So there could be a crack in the PCB or something like that. So let me uh, take, a, take a look and inspect the board. All right, so I have this set in the service position, which is just on its side, and I have it hooked up to the isolation transformer back there. So it is powered up right now, although it's still not turning on. I've been poking around with a multimeter looking for in any shorts and anything wrong with the voltages. So there's a DC power supply over here. It takes the mains AC, converts it into DC, and the set primarily runs off of five volts for like the standby for the microcontroller, stuff like that. There's a nine or around a 10 volt rail and a 40 volt rail. The 40 volts makes its way over to the flyback here. Uh, where is it? It's this connector, that pin right there, which when we look here, it's uh, 40 volts and that works great. So it sets off right now in the power supply. The, the AC power supply is working. I think the problem may exist on the voltages that are being created by the flyback. It seems to generate 180 volts. It also generates minus 12 and positive 12. And I have the multimeter hooked up between the C pin and 180, which I think should give us something. I gotta change the range. <laughs> this thing is so slow to auto range. Okay, there we go. Let's see what this. So we got about 40 volts. So that's not right. 
And then there's an E pin right there and we have a minus 12 volt rail there. Let's see what that gives us. Nothing at all. And then we have a positive 12 volt rail right there. That actually gave us around 13 volts. So the positive rail is working, but the minus rail is definitely not working and the 180 volts is also too low. So on the negative 12 volt rail here, we're getting four volts. I'm assuming that there's some kind of short or load on that rail. Now, the fact that we're of course seeing a, a positive voltage is fine. It's AC output out of the, the flyback transformer. So we should see 12 volts or so on this. And then there's a minus 12 volt regulator IC on here that converts that AC into DC. That probably is the issue. And my assumption is the squealing we're hearing is due to a short, I think, on that particular rail. Now, here we are looking at the schematics for this set. And unfortunately, this section of the schematics is just horrible. It's really hard to read. The minus 12 comes off the flyback right here. So we were measuring between the E pin here and the 12 minus 12. And that comes up here and it goes through a diode, which I think is like the rectifier. So it's just very simple rectification, minus 12 volt uh, diode that kind of goes off to another direction. It also seems to have a connection there and it goes through some resistors, a zero ohm resistor. So that's like a, just a jumper link. Splits off that way. If we follow it this way, goes up here through another diode, H protect diode. Uh, into some stuff up there and let's follow it the other way. So through this rectification diode and there's a dash line, it does say minus 12 right there and makes its way over here, minus 12 into this um, vertical chip here. So I'm wondering if there's a problem in this vertical chip. Let's look for IC501. Let's see if pin one is shorted to ground, but there's also caps and stuff that also could be shorted. So it could be, it could be anything around there. So IC501 is right here and we're hooked up to pin one. Whoops, it kept, keeps falling off. Pin one, 10 mega ohm. So that's fine. Let's look at pin one. When I turn the set on, it's currently set to DC. Come on, don't fall over. Yeah, we're getting like seven or negative seven volts there. So clearly not working properly. Something is pulling that rail down. So there it is, minus six, minus seven volts. I am now connected onto pin six, which is the positive 12 volt rail. Let's just see if we are getting the positive 12 volts DC. No, we're not also, we're getting like three volts DC. Okay. It's funny that the 12 volt was so low because I'm pretty sure that we saw 12 volts on there. Let's turn it on. Oh, got to change the ranging on this thing because it's too slow. Oh, we're only getting like nine volts now. Okay, so yeah, something's up there. The 12 volt output just gets rectified and then that feeds like various components on the board. So the thing to consider here is that all the voltages that come out of the flyback, the 180 volts, which you can consider as the boost voltage, and then the uh, minus and the positive 12 volts, which is, they're all gonna be AC. Those are all interrelated to each other. Uh, the high voltage also on the set is also all related to each other. If something is pulling down one of those outputs, then it will probably have an effect on all of them and the voltages will be too low on the set and that's why it's probably shutting down. And then the squealing noise is gonna be related to whatever is pulling down the rails, whatever's like shorting out those rails. Now I did unplug the deflection yoke and I connected it to my LCR meter here while it was disconnected. I just wanted to see if the deflection yoke itself was shorted and it was fine, no issues there. It had um, normal inductance, or well, at least as far as I'm aware, normal inductance. All right, what I've gone ahead and done is I've disconnected the back of the CRT because there's some focus voltages and stuff that are generated by the flyback that also go into that. And let's see if that had any effect whatsoever uh, on the output here. No, it didn't at all. We are currently on that 12 volt pin. I mean, I guess it went up a little bit and that's because those focus uh, voltages aren't going into the back of the CRT anymore. But still, uh, yeah, obviously we still have a problem somewhere. Alrighty, the oscilloscope has been broken out and I'm using my 100X probe, which is a bit better for working on a set like this. So if we look at the C pin on the flyback, this is the output from the horizontal drive. And we turn this on and it all looks normal actually. According to the service manual, we should see about like 360 volts peak to peak, which is exactly what we're getting. And the frequency looks correct-ish. And then if we go over here to the 180 volt pin, 
And I think I wasn't seeing the correct voltage because the multimeter just wasn't liking that high frequency AC. And that's probably the case with the 12 volts rails as well. So let's look at this. Uh, we're getting, oops, that disappeared. I think we're getting about, turn this on again, 190 volts peak to peak. So that seems correct as well. And now I'm on the 12 volt rail here and we turn this on. And I'm only seeing about six volts peak to peak on the 12 volt rail. So this still leads me back to believing that there's something going on here. And let's look at the minus 12 volt rail. It should just look the same, basically. Uh, yep, about six or seven volts peak to peak, and that's it. And I moved over here to the 12 volt rail. Oh, well, that looks weird. We're getting some kind of waveform that doesn't quite look right. Minus 40 volt peak to peak, and I'm, to be honest, I'm not even sure that's working because of the scale on this thing. Let's try again with it set to 10 volts per division. Yeah, okay, about minus 50 volts or so. Hmm, that's weird. That's on the 12 volt rail, and if we go to the minus 12 volt rail, what does this one look like? That one was getting about 7 volts peak to peak, but the waveform looked totally different than it did on the, uh, on the plus 12 volts. And back on the schematics, that confuses me a little bit because plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts are all kind of sharing the same windings here and uh, the ground here. So I don't think we should be seeing that much of a different waveform on, on the plus 12 than on the minus 12. I may be misunderstanding this though. Now looking at the 12 volts here, it comes off. There's a couple like some kind of caps or something. Uh, we have a diode here, that's the rectification. And then that creates what is the plus 12 volt rail inside the set. And it goes down there, goes up there, but there's nothing that's taken off this particular rail that could be causing that to look quite the way it does. I wonder if this diode B509 is open. Let me go look for that. Now that diode is right here and uh, the diode drop is the diode drop. The diode drop is just under five volts, uh, 0.488 volts. So that diode is fine. It's not shorted. It's not open. All right, I'm a little bit all over the place <laughs> on this video. So one thing I'm noticing here is this pin here. And by the way, this set's unplugged. It says minus 12 volts, but there's nothing actually on that pin at all. It's not going to anything. So I looked on the schematics for the rectifier diode for the minus 12 volt rail, and it's 504, which is up here on the board. There's 504, and it's actually going to this pin right here on the flyback. It's not going to the one that has the next to the label down there. And I know you can't really see that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So where the black clip is connected is actually the output of what goes to minus 12 volts that pin right there is just floating. So I'm just gonna connect the oscilloscope to the correct pin there for the minus 12 volts. And let's see how that actually looks now. Move this into view, turn this on. It's basically looking exactly the same uh, as the, the plus 12 volt rail, which is exactly what I would expect. That waveform should look the same between those two pins because they're sharing the same winding inside the transformer. Now, the big question for me is, is there a fault with this flyback transformer? Is there actually a problem where this particular rail that goes between the plus and the minus 12 volt or what becomes plus and 12 volts, is that somehow shorted to one of the other rails or like rails, like light rails, are the windings shorted to something else? Because I don't know, that just seems weird that we're seeing like that plus 70, plus 50 volts on here, you know, the waveform going up to 50 volts. Let me see if I could see on the schematic, maybe there's a, a little picture that shows what the waveform should look like. And nope, unfortunately not. There's a whole bunch of waveforms here and they have pictures or little numbers here to tell you where to look on the board. But if we go down to the flyback down here, uh, the 12 volt and minus 12 that come off here, there are no little indicators show uh, what the waveforms are. So up here it says like 19 and 20. So you can look there to see the waveforms and 21 down here on that part. But there's nothing on there to, to show how those should look. Okay, let me unplug the set again. So it is out of the plug. And let me check resistance on these various things here. So let's see what we're getting between plus 12 and the minus 12 here. What's, what's the resistance we're gonna see? It should be pretty low. Yeah, okay, 0.37 ohms, that seems normal. 
And how about between plus 12 and 180 volts here? Okay, the multimeter is just having a problem. It's kind of going all over the place. Okay. And let's look at the pin that's coming from the horizontal drive. This one right here. All right, it was like 40K going down to 17, 16K. 6K, 5K. Now the set's off, by the way. It's not powered up at all right now. I don't know what that should look like. Oh, did it just jump up again? So all the resistance measurements on the flyback, they seem okay. I don't see anything that looks that looks completely out of the ordinary here. So this is a little bit mysterious. It's definitely a bit mysterious. All right, I'm getting a little bit closer. So we have the scope in roll mode and let's go on to the minus 12 volt test point right here. And when we turn on the set, so watch this. See that we get a little burst down to 12 volts. Well, not even 12 volts. We're at two volts per division. So it gets to about minus four volts and then, uh, you know, it stops. And we can go on to the plus 12 volts test point and it will look exactly the same, but in the positive side. And when I hear the squealing, I can see it uh, kind of oscillating, which is kind of telling me one thing. So neither rail get up to voltage and then they kind of do this oscillation thing. There's something in this set that it's faulty and it's on both of those rails. I think it would be unlikely that say one of the diodes or something on one of the rails was causing a problem. It's something that's on both of them. Now there are several components that are on both. Of course, the flyback transformer still could be the issue, but I think there's a, a vertical deflection IC that is also, this it's this one right here. I think that's on both as well. And what if that has somehow failed? And when the set tries to start the vertical deflection and then both rails get killed and then the set just shuts off. I think the set will shut off if there's no deflection. That's one of its uh, checks. Just, you don't want to have like a line across the screen that will burn into the CRT. So the set just shuts down. On the schematic, it is this IC here. It's 501. We were probing around there before. That is on plus 12 and the minus 12. What I'm probably gonna have to do is just sort of look through the schematic and see what else is on both of those rails. So minus 12 here goes to this little thing. It looks like a, an op amp. It's also on the plus 12, it's on both of those. Now, one of the things I already did is I checked for continuity between plus 12 or minus 12 and ground just to see if there was some kind of a, a short or something and I didn't detect anything. But I do wonder now, could it possibly be one of these ICs are bad. There's also a, a cap right here that connects plus 12 to minus 12. You know, let me check the uh, resistance between those two rails really quickly. Nope, that's all fine. So the resistance between these two rails is fine. It's like it was in the mega ohm. And then also double check that the minus 12, this is after rect rectification to ground is not anything wild. And it was like meg ohm on the minus 12 and kilo ohms on the plus 12. So both of that, those are totally fine. So I think I'm gonna have to pause this video right now and I'm gonna go do something else and sort of think on this a little bit and maybe I can kind of come to the conclusion of, of what's going on. But at this point, I'm kind of thinking that the vertical deflection I see is somehow bad or maybe that other little, um, I think it was like a little eight pin dip or I, I think it's not a dip, I think it's probably this chip right here. That little surface mount I see is maybe somehow bad and that is killing those rails. I, I don't know. I don't really have any other explanation of what, what's going on. Okay, so I've been looking around at the voltage rails that are coming off the flyback and the 180 volts is basically getting like two volts or less and it immediately drops to zero. And remember I talked about that all the voltage rails that come out of the flyback, the plus 12, minus 12, and 180 are all interdependent on each other. And the 180 volts specifically only goes to the neck board for powering up the cathode drive circuit. Well, the set's unplugged right now. I just disconnected that cable right here from the neck board. The neck board's not even connected to the back of the CRT right now. So let's see what happens if we turn on the set, I'll have to plug it in. Let's see if we can actually get 180 volts on that circuit. First thing we'll need to do, of course, is change this from one volt per division up to something like 100 volts per division and we're in roll mode, so we should be able to see what happens. All right, here we go. Nope, no change. And the set just shuts right off as well. So that definitely rules out that 180 volt circuit that is going to the neck board. 
So I think the next thing to do is to take out this part right here, which is the vertical deflection IC, which is what's taking the uh, 12 volts, uh, the minus 12 volts and the positive 12 volts. Let's see if that changes anything. And, and while I do that, I'm gonna reconnect the uh, connector back onto the neck board to reconnect that 180 volts. All right, so this is the vertical deflection IC. I think it's labeled LA783D. And I'm trying to see if there's anything that looks obviously wrong with this. And I certainly don't see anything. It looks, it looks completely fine. Now with this out of the set, I am curious if the voltages will come back. If they don't come back, well, I am kind of leaning towards a bad flyback here in this set. I don't really know if that's the case or not, but it's possible, right? Now, obviously without this in the set, we're not gonna have a functional set because there's not gonna be any vertical deflection whatsoever. But I have this connected to 180 volts again, which is reconnected uh, to the neck board. And uh, let's turn on the set and let's see if we see anything. No, no change at all. So the 180 volts is still not working. And we're on five volts per division now. And I am on the 12 volt test point here, which uh, was feeding that part right there. And no, same thing. We get a little bit of voltage there and then it goes away. I don't understand what is keeping this thing from working correctly. Let's take a look at the high voltage. I know this set's developing some high voltage. I can, I can tell it's doing that, but let's see how much exactly it's developing. That only looked like it was about 5,000 volts or so. I wasn't really getting a good connection with the high voltage probe in there. So let me turn the set onto its base. All right, let's try that again. Hopefully that's actually in focus. I don't know if it is. Okay, there we go. We're getting about 8,000 volts, which is way under what it should be generating. The high voltage output that goes to the CRT through this red cable here is all derived from that same switching horizontal drive that all the other voltages are derived from. 180 volts, plus 12, minus 12, and like this, which is probably supposed to be, you know, 18,000 volts or whatever, all derived from the same thing. So theoretically, if one of them were being shorted down to ground, then theoretically that would result in all of them being low. The thing is, when I look at the scope, for the, you know, the not the high voltage, but the 180 and the, the 12s, is they kind of pop up and then immediately drop back down to ground. So it's like something is drawing them down. Ah, oh, it just doesn't make sense though. It just doesn't make sense what's going on. I'm really of a mind that it's the flyback transformer here that is the problem on this set at this point. We are seeing a good horizontal drive signature when we look at it on the scope, it's the correct frequency. I know that the deflection yoke is connected right now and the inductance on it looks good as well. With the 180 volts, the 12 volts, and the negative 12 volt rail coming out of the flyback, none of those seem to be shorted to ground. Like I thought maybe this chip was causing an issue uh, when it powered up, for instance, but obviously with it out, the behavior is exactly the same, exactly. With the neck board disconnected, the behavior is exactly the same as well, like no change. So I don't think the short's there. And not to mention, like we should be seeing a short circuit if we hooked up an oscilloscope to those rails, either before or after the rectifiers. And I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing like very high resistance on all of those, which is normal. And then for testing flyback transformers, you need some somewhat specialized equipment. And I, from my understanding and my reading, even when you have that equipment, it's not like there's one quick test you can do and that identifies for sure it's bad. There is a lot of art and science to the way flybacks fail. The windings can break down internally, which can only show up as a problem when the high voltage is present. When it's just sitting here um, with everything discharged, the flyback can test normally. But once this thing powers up, we saw it, you know, it starts to generate some high voltage, hits 8,000 volts, and maybe it's breaking down internally. It's shorting between the windings. I'm just not sure. <laughs> I'm just not sure. I'm totally, totally stumped at trying to make this set work. 
Incidentally, I did look online to see if I could buy a flyback transformer for this set. NX1745 is the part number. And no, unfortunately, I found references to this part. Like it was available back in the past, but it doesn't seem to be available anymore. So I think that is going to be it for this repair. I'm going to call it. I know it's going to be unsatisfactory here because this thing is not working. But if you have suggestions, if you're a CRT expert and, you know, you recognize the symptoms of what this thing is doing, definitely please let me know. I hope I can edit this video into some kind of a video that makes any kind of sense. Because honestly, I've sort of recorded it off and on. <laughs> and, and it's just been my sort of stream of consciousness here. So I have a feeling it's probably not going to be a particularly great video. So yeah, I think that's going to be it. Uh, comment down below if you have ideas, suggestions. Huge thanks to my patrons. Names are scrolling off the side of the screen. Uh, don't forget that I'm going to be at VCF. Uh, one of these VCFs coming up. Uh, Midwest, uh, set VCF West, and VCF in Atlanta. I think that's called Southeast. So depending on when this video hits the, uh, the interwebs, you might be able to come see me at one of those shows. So if you liked this video, thumbs up. If you didn't know what to do, all that usual stuff, subscribe, etc., etc. And that's going to be that. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and I will see you next time. Wow, I'm just discombobulated here. Okay, bye.